It is also worth mentioning that you could save your code and save your progress by creating an account. This is completely optional and you could complete the activity without making an account. However, it might be helpful if say you need to step away from your computer a little bit or your code and then come back to it and continue working on it. To, do the, to make an account, all you have to do is click the sign up button at the top corner. And then this takes you to the sign up screen. All you need is a username, email, and then your password and confirm password. And then once you make your, or make your account, you could log in. And here it just gives you your code. Um, now to edit the code, you should make a copy. To do that, you're gonna click the file button up there in the corner. And then click on the duplicate button. And now it just made a copy of the code for you to work on. And then to see your um, projects and everything, you just want to click on the little, uh, your little username up there, and then click on My Sketches. And that takes you to all of your codes that you've been working on. And here you can see is just the code that we just made a copy of. Now, say you wanted to um, see more of your code on the screen and you didn't want this little console down here, you could minimize that just by clicking on this little arrow down there to minimize it. And then say you also wanted to save the code that you've been working on so far, you're just going to click on the file button up there and then click on save. Now I just want to mention again that making an account is completely optional and you don't have to do it, however it might be helpful. Okay, so now that we have some data, let's plug it into the code and see what it does. So first we're going to click here to open up the code that we can edit in the editor. And so we can see we have a bunch of lines of code here, so let's just walk through and talk about what some of these do. So First, these first two lines are for tmin and tmax. So those refer to the maximum and minimum, or the hottest and the coldest temperatures that we just calculated. So tmin will be, for us, 28 degrees, because that was from January. And tmax, we're going to plug in 74.5 degrees Fahrenheit, because that was in July. You can go ahead and plug in whatever numbers you just calculated on your own. OK, wait. So the point of this activity is to see how global warming affects the number of freezing days that we have every year. But some of you out there might be wondering, well, what if we live in a warmer place? What if the temperature in January never gets below 32 degrees Fahrenheit, and then we wouldn't have any freezing days? Well, what do we do then? Well, we do address this in challenge exercise number one. So we'll cover that later. But for now, probably just try and pick a different city from the Great Lakes region that's colder and then you can go ahead and mess around with the code later in challenge one. So the rest of this code is just setting up our functions for modeling global warming. A here just talks about the amplitude, so that refers to how much the temperature varies up and down from day to day. T average here is just the average between the uh, July and the January temperatures. So that gives us a pretty good idea of the average temperature year round. Next, T warming here is set to zero at first. This tells us how much global warming we're modeling at the time, so we're setting it to zero as a baseline. Over time, we'll be increasing T warming to simulate global warming. Next, normal color and warmer color just refer to the colors of the graphs that we're going to make. Normal color is green, and that's going to be our baseline again. And warmer color is red, so that's going to be, again, we'll see it's increasing over time. All right, and then so here we can see the draw function. Um, that just simulates and predicts the temperature for each day, as well as counting the number of days below zero, or below freezing. And then the display code that is right here, um, that just shows all the data on the screen. And then finally, when we, um, after we simulate all of this, the T warming code down here, that just increases T warming by 0.01 and it just runs the simulation all over again.